Hello everyone and welcome to another Flower Power Live. I'm using a new streaming software today, so hopefully it will all work out nicely. I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving weekend and I this week I'm going to be continuing my uh, shows about sort of common culinary herbs that we don't think very much about from a medicinal perspective. And, um, but I'm switching a little bit over from the Mediterranean aromatic herbs to the more, what we think of the sweet spices more from Southeast Asia area. So today, well, first of all, my name is Allison from The Well Cultivated Life, and thank you for joining me here uh, today. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about this little teeny tiny itsy bitsy thing. Cloves. Keep that right in front of my white hair. That always makes a good background, doesn't it? Cloves. And I'm sure you're familiar with the clove. It is just so nice. I opened up this bottle to take a few out for the show, and my whole room filled with delicious aromatic smell. And that is the main property about clove that we'll learn about a little bit later. But first, I wanted to tell you that clove is the dried flower bud of this plant. And it's a tropical plant, grows in the rainforest. So I, I've got to go to a picture. Uh, but you can see on this picture here, if you look right here in the little flower bud, you can see that characteristic shape that's dried. So that's what the fresh flowers look like. It, it's an evergreen um, tree. And so it's broadleaf evergreen. So it's not like a pine tree, but more like a magnolia tree or something like that that has those big broad leaves. And so it's native to Indonesia and to the uh, southern Philippines. So the lowest temperature it can tolerate is about 59 degrees Fahrenheit. So needless to say, I and probably not you will be growing a clove tree in your yard. But luckily, um, it's very easy to find at your local herb store and pretty much every grocery store as well. Now, one of the uses of clove that we think about this time of year is for making pomanders as gifts and for decorations. And I didn't have time to make a whole pomander, but I thought I'd just bring a picture in case you don't not familiar with it. So this is the what we usually think of as a pomander today. It's an, usually an orange, sometimes an apple, and it's studded with cloves and um, allowed to sort of dry down. And then it's used for creating a beautiful scent. Um, and also for, um, for, like I said, for decoration. So, however, the original use of pomanders was, uh, goes back to the middle ages during that foul time in our history when people for some reason thought that throwing their personal waste products and they're rotting food and bodily fluids just out in the street or even in their own house was okay. And so as a result, of course, we all know there were plagues and all kinds of rampant diseases running around at that time. But the thing that's so interesting about it is that people thought that the scent, the smell, the pungent rotting smell was the reason why they got sick. And so if they didn't have to smell that, then they wouldn't, they'd be okay. And some of that might partly be true, right? So here's a quote from a, a lovely website that says this. They supposed that the sickness entered through the foul odor. Thus, it was the purview of the wealthy to carry scented sachets, bouquets, and pomanders as charms to not only make their days more agreeable, but to keep them healthy and well. Common sense of the day would have been nutmeg, clove, rose, musk, civet, which comes from another type of animal, ambergris, agarwood, or rosemary, among many others. And that's from dustyoldthing.com. And so during this time period, a pomander wasn't an orange, though. It was actually like an ornate golden, almost like a like a tea, tea ball um, on a chain that had different compartments that you could put herbs into. And then all the lords and ladies would walk around with this, you know, it was like jewelry almost, um, but they also would fill it with all of these kinds of fancy herbs. Now, your everyday average peasant definitely would not have access to a gold or silver pomander, so they're probably just putting their herbs 
into a piece of burlap and tying it around their neck and hoping for the best. And they certainly would not have ex had access to oranges or probably not cloves. because Those were sort of exotic imports at the time. So, um, yes, that's pretty much the history of pomanders and cloves, but we also can use cloves medicinally. So there's a number of applications. And of course, I went to my very favorite, Matthew Wood. Um, according to Matthew Wood, cloves are a sweet warming stimulant used for cold or depressed tissue states. Clove oil is spicy, stimulating, and heating. It's not surprising if you think about what it smells like, right? It's classified as hot and dry in the third degree. So that's pretty hot and pretty dry. It stimulates the circulation, raises the temperature of the body, increases digestion and nutrition, and is antiseptic. So it's hot. It's going to kill things off. It's going to stimulate your digestion and get it moving. So they can be, uh, cloves can be used, you know, usually you would probably use the oil or you could use just the um, cloves in, uh, in a tea. It's a common uh, ingredient in chai tea. And you would... Um, not want to take cloves though if you had high blood pressure because it is stimulating and thus therefore you do not want to uh, aggravate blood pre your blood pressure any worse. Now, it can help the blood by helping to regulate blood sugar levels and it does this because it has a good amount of manganese in it, not magnesium, manganese, which is a, you know an essential element that we do need and it has Actually, one teaspoon of ground cloves contains 50% of the manganese that you need for like your US RDA or whatever. So um, it's not surprising that we use cloves in these kinds of sweet treats because it's helping to balance your blood sugar. So isn't that handy, right? Now, the most um, one of the most common ways to use the clove, it's so fragrant, is that is to extract the oil. So you can buy the Essential oil and clove, they're pretty easy to grow. So it's usually not that expensive. It's just like a basic oil I got from the um, health food store. I almost said hardware store. Before you know it, they'll be selling this at the hardware store, right? But uh, one of the things is that this says clove bud on it. And one of the things I know, uh, discovered as I was researching for the show was that um, the, uh, sorry, my hair is tickling me. Um, is that there are inferior types of clove oil that use the um, that use the um, leaves and the stem as well, and so you want to make sure that if you're buying an essential oil, you want to make sure it is clove bud only and not just clove oil because it could have some of these parts that just is not as potent, not as potent as the actual buds. So. One of the most common used things is for oral health. It has both the antibacterial properties that can kind of help kill off a lot of the um, bacteria that live in our mouth and cause cavities. And also it's because it is um, affects the tissue, it can be kind of numbing and help with tooth pain, at least for temporary tooth pain as well. And part of that has to do with the fact that it contains a bunch of different chemical constituents, including one type of cannabinoid, which is, of course, for inflammation and for pain. So I would say that uh, clove essential oil is definitely an essential oil to have in your home toolkit. You can put it in a diffuser for the antibiotic properties. And then also, according to New Directions of Aromatics, it has a warming, stimulating scent that is reputed to be an aphrodisiac put it in your diffuser in the bedroom, I guess, right? So um, even though it is a flower, I did not find any information at all about a clove flower essence. So I do not know at this time if there is in, been any work done with creating a clove flower essence. So we're going to skip through that today. And of course, I didn't have a... Um, card for clove. This is what happens when you decide to do a plant and you don't have the, uh, and it's not in your deck. So I decided to draw a card from this Wisdom for Healing deck from Carolyn Miss. And the cards is, uh, says, notice subtle changes. 
Notice subtle changes. And basically what the card means is that it's saying that even the slightest shift in like what you're doing or how you're doing things can create a change in your personal energy. So that can also create a change in your comfort level. So just like they suggest, just put on a different colored shirt for today, right? And that can shift the way that you're feeling and how comfortable you are. So cloves, again, are one of these herbs that we just don't pay that think that much about unless we're making a pumpkin pie, and yet they are highly potent. And this little teeny weeny, I tried taping some to a piece of paper so you can see them better. Little ugly, shriveled up, dried flower part is incredibly potent. And so this represents to us how something very small can have a big impact on our lives. A lot of times we think like, well, I've got to have this grand idea and these big aspirations to go to the gym and I'll get a six pack or whatever. Um, but really just this little clove bud can make a big shift in your life. Um, so for example, if I were to put a drop of this on my skin, I would know right away. But if I put a drop into a carrier oil, I would probably have one of the nicest warming, um, stimulating types of massages that I had had in a while. So don't be foolish about this supposed little thing that you bring into your life, but just decide what would be lovely right now and then do it, right? What would warm me? What would come for me? And then just go ahead and make that little shift and that little change and bring that into your life. It's that easy. It's as easy as a little teeny tiny clove bud. Oh my gosh, that smells so good. So that's our message from clove tonight. You can see behind me, I got all kinds of stuff getting ready for my early inspired holiday challenge, which starts tomorrow. And we already have like, oh my gosh, 80 people that have signed up for this. I am so excited uh, to have so many in people that are interested in bringing more herbs into their uh, into their daily life, into their cooking, and, and so on. So if you're interested, make sure and sign up, herbalholidaychallenge.com. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching tonight. And until then, till next week, follow me on Instagram and find out what I'm up to. Take care, everyone.